Tomorrow Nerds! This week on the LARP House, if you couldn't tell, we are going to show you how to make customized latex creature ears. This tutorial is great for costumers and game designers alike because we are going to make a mold so you can create however many pairs you want on the Jeep. Next is that we are in the home stretch for your in-character interview submissions. You have until December 1st and that is just two weeks away, so the time is now if you want to be in our Meet the Characters Global Edition video. Submission guidelines and interview questions are in the description for this video or at a post pinned to the top of our Facebook page. Next, we have finally released some of the long-awaited LARP House armor on our Etsy store. Check out our Raven Fae Pauldron and Arm set. It is made out of a fiberglass infused resin, so it is lightweight, strong, and most importantly, it does not bake you in the sun or freeze you in the cold. You're welcome. If you like LARP House and the stuff that we make on this show, but you don't have a whole lot of money, here is what just $5 a month will get you on our Patreon page. You will be entered to win a complete makeover for you, your LARP, you will be entered to win our monthly upcoming giveaways, as well as get exclusive content and tutorials, and you will even get one free cover a month made by yours truly. And we are so close to our giveaway goal, we just have $100 left to go that we announced last week our first item that will be up and that is the Magic Rock Cup. And finally, on this week of all weeks, I just want to say that I am very grateful for all of you, my precious, wonderful nerds. And especially I'm grateful for all of the nerds that were so afraid to try out LARP, but you went out and you did it anyway, and then you messaged me about how much fun you had and, and how much happier you are now that you found the community and this cool hobby. So I just, I'm really grateful for you guys. Really proud of you. Go you. Okay, so first things first, you gotta twist up your little, like, foam ear plugs and put them in the ear. And now I'm covering my, my poor ears with mold release, which is, which is safe for the skin. The link will be in the description for the type that I use. But it is the smooth on brand of mold release for the body that comes with, um, or is usually accompanied by the silicone that we use. Now here, what I have done is found a coffee tub and cut a small hole in the bottom for the ear and cut the whole rest of the top off so that, you know, it looks like that. And here we are using body double. I'm using standard body double. Um, and we're just pouring it, you know, kind of drizzling it onto the ear and trying to make sure that it gets under the ear especially, but you have to, um, you have to kind of press down on the cup a little bit on the coffee container so that silicone doesn't get everywhere. Just have to make sure to mix enough that it covers the whole ear. Um, what you should do for this type of silicone is pre-pour everything so you can just dump everything into one container and mix it because it has a very short pot life depending on the type of body double you get and then I you know you just gotta sit there for like 20 minutes it feels like you're in a guillotine and you gotta press down keep pressing down like I said on the on the coffee thing and then once that 20 minutes is up you just carefully remove the hair of the victim from the mold. Help me. Uh, yeah, but it's not that bad. If you put enough mold release in your hair, it, it comes out pretty easily. So there, we've got a beautiful, a beautiful mold. Now, releasing it from the container is a little bit difficult. I ended up just cutting it out. Which, yeah, because we didn't put mold release in there. Just silicone only really sticks to very few things, but mold release always helps. Anyway, so there, we've got a beautiful, beautiful ear mold of silicone. We can make as many of my ears as we want. And so what I'm doing here is finding the deepest part of the mold, finding the, the biggest undercut and cutting a couple uh, slices into the mold so that it, it comes apart easier. There, there are more uh, 
there's more flexibility, so depending on what you pour in there, it will have less of a chance of breaking as you as you take it out. Just, you know, be careful. It's a exacto knife. They suck. So, I'm going to show you how to cast it in stone, which is what everyone does, and how I actually like to cast it in hot glue, which, as far as I'm aware, pretty much nobody does. So we're starting with the stone, and just putting the coffee containers back around the ears, duct taping them up, sealing up the bottom so that watery stone doesn't go everywhere. Then this stuff I'm using is called Ultra Cal. It's like plaster, but a lot harder. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's stone. And, um, you don't, you don't need much, but you pour it in a little bit at a time. Mixing it like, if you had a sifter, that would be ideal, but nobody does. And see here, when you sprinkle it in and it starts to form islands, <laughs> what my art teachers called that when they when it starts to float at the top, then it's ready. Then you spray mold release into it and pour that mixture in. And what I did um, after pouring that mixture in, I thickened it up. I added a little more of the stone. And and I I poured the rest of it in after that. What the what the thickening does it is make it a lot less likely that um, it will leak and spill everywhere. So you know it, it's less watery. And we're not really caring about detail capture on this bottom part. This is just the base. Huh. And so after you gently wiggle it out, you hopefully have a whole ear like that. Now we're moving on to the hot glue. You just, you wait until the glue is heated up probably longer than you would normally and just stick it in and kind of hold it in one place and just squeeze the trigger repeatedly till it sort of rises out. And then you stick it in the fridge for 20 minutes and out, out comes the beautiful ear. <laughs> Then, you know, I just shave off the, the excess. What I'm doing here is adding a little sort of shelf, uh, because I know when I sculpt, I'm, and when you apply ears, you want that anchor piece sort of on a little bit more on your face. So I'm just adding that, that shelf for, for that purpose. So I can sculpt there too. Um, just peeling the the clay off. I'm actually washing it off with, with alcohol here because modeling clay dissolves, it breaks down in alcohol. And now we begin the sculpting. <laughs> I don't know that I have like any particular tips besides my usual sculpting tips, which are please use reference. Um, if you're using modeling clay, have a alcohol handy. Sculpting tools are all a matter of personal preference, really. I like having, like, a scrapey tool and a chip brush and this weird paddle. I don't know. <laughs> um, it's probably my favorite one, actually. But, yeah, I usually, um, doing, doing a pretty additive method here. <laughs> But yeah, just use reference, um, figure out, I wanted, I wanted my ears to look a little bit like, not Christmas elf, but definitely not tiny and delicate like, like the Tolkien elves. I wanted it to be like, whoa, that's a fairy. Okay. So, <laughs> you know, large, pointy. Here I am smoothing it out with a brush dipped in alcohol. I did a whole lot of that. I actually switched to an eyeshadow brush, which ended up working really nicely because makeup brushes, if they're good makeup brushes, are usually really dense, and so it had a lot more of an effect. And I'm just kind of 
noodling with the with the details, but we have got um we got some we got some fair sculpts here. And now, since your ears are made of hot glue, you can just hot glue them to a base. <sighs> I love hot glue so much. So, what I'm doing here is using rebound 25 without any additives or anything fancy, and I'm just I'm about to switch to a brush here in a minute, but I'm, I'm putting on a detail layer, which is a layer I like to put on anything I cast to sort of prevent air bubbles from uh, messing up the actual surface of your, of your sculpture. So I'm just brushing on a layer of silicone before I, before I move on to the meat of the mold, so to speak. And here, I've mixed up the same type of silicone, but I've added um, a bunch of cabosil into the mix, which, if if you don't if you don't already know, it is it is a silicone thickener and deadener. Um, this is how I cast pretty much everything. I do the detail layer, and then I thicken up the the silicone to like almost like peanut butter consistency, right? And then just trowel it on there. Um, yeah, if you don't make it thick enough, you you end up running into problems. So don't shy away. Also, always use a mask, a dust mask, when you're when you're mixing cabosil. It's not good for your lungs. So yeah, just wait six hours for that to set, and we're just gonna cut it. Cut it right out along the back of the ear because it will have a tiny seam. But if you do it on the back of ears, no one's ever going to know or care. So there we go. That's that. Just rip out, rip out your ears. If you made the mold nice and thick, you shouldn't have to worry about being delicate here. So yeah, we got all that. Now we're ready to to cast them. What I have here is a cup of warm water. It's important that it's warm and not hot. And I poured liquid latex into my little paper cup, adding some makeup for coloring. And once uh, once it's sort of at like your nice relative skin tone family, add just a little bit of the warm water. And then you just, you just pour a little bit of it in Shake it around to try to mitigate those air bubbles that like to form in the very tips of the ears. And then just fill it. Then pour it out again. Get as much out as you can. And then shake out the excess. You want like a nice film. And then do the same thing to the other side. There you go. Wonderful. This is actually very satisfying to do. Yeah. Many thin coats is the rule. And then, you're gonna do that exact same thing a couple of times, to say the least. I think that was... This is coat two. And this is coat three. I'm confused. <laughs> okay, this is three. This is three. And now, after the third coat, I have added more latex to the mixture so that the formula would be stronger on the inside because makeup and water kind of weakens the, the strength of the latex. And then just do two two more coats like that. You could probably get away with one since it's a little bit thicker of a mixture now. And then once those are dry, put in some baby powder and release release your pointy children from their silicone prisons. And trim them up. Uh, a, good, a good rule is to kind of trim off 
all of the, the really textured places because that's where your actual ear is and all the smooth places are going to generally be where your clay was so that's what you want to replicate with just a little bit of bleed over to anchor it down and it's beautiful that's all for this week nerds and tune in next week because we are following this tutorial immediately with another tutorial about how to apply these ears and make the edges invisible on this or any latex appliance so don't don't miss that and don't forget to check out the links we mentioned in the intro, and super don't forget to submit your character interview. And remember that we love you, we cherish you, and if you have any questions, comments, or emotional helpers, please feel free to message us. We are on Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, and Instagram. And as always, nerds, like us, subscribe to us, fight with us. Now somebody give me a loot.